Hey everyone, in this session, it's going to follow on from a technique that we've done in class, and that's the extrusion technique. And Jason's also got a video of this technique within Blender. But I'm going to use Maya to extrude from an image. We're going to then put this into Blender, render it, show you how to light it, and then also how to composite this within Photoshop. So this is the final render uh, from Photoshop. This is what it then looks like. Let's go to Maya. This is what it looks like in Maya. So we can see we've extruded multiple images here. And then we'll put it into Blender and I'll show you how I would light this scene. Okay. So let's get into the bare bones basic. And that is how to do the extrusion. Now, again, we've already done this in class, but I want to show you how we can do this in Maya uh, in case you've forgotten or need, uh, yeah, need to go over it again. So I'm going to use this one as an example. We've also got a path here. Now I've got an example that you might need to find a better reference here, but it's good enough for the concept. If I just go back to the final render, there's enough information there for me to continue to paint into it, maybe find more photo references and start to photo bash into this. And uh, again, start to paint in some of the elements, uh, such as the smoke and maybe the bits of kind of rubbish and boxes and bags, which you could always model. You could put them in the scene. Uh, but if you wanted to photo bash into it, because it might take you a lot less time photo bashing than, than rendering it or modeling it. You could use that technique. So let's go into our first model. So how do we replicate this? Now it's going to keep these to the side just so you can see this as a reference. But the first thing I do is I'd load up Maya and we're going to select a plane and I'm just going to scale this up and then I will rotate this as well. Now if you hold J on the keyboard and then move it upwards, then that will snap along the axes and then we can use W to move up or we can use these here. So move, rotate, and scale. So we don't want all of these individual segments here. So subdivision width is set to 10. Turn both of these to one. So width and height, turn it to one because we want to add our own manual uh, extrusions in there. So let's hold right click because we need to add a new material. If you add a material to the standard Lambert material, that's there by default. And it means every other model that you import into the scene will have that texture. So you always need to assign a new material when you're creating a new object. So assign a new material. Again, just by holding right click, go down to the bottom, assign new material. We'll add a new Lambert and then we'll name this. So we've already got Lambert 14. I'll put building and I'm not quite sure what number we're at. So I'm just going to do it quite high. Building 16. Yours might be building 01, next one building 02, 03. And just take note that you can't use a space. That's why you'll see underscore an awful lot. So underscore is essentially your, your space. So building underscore 16 in this example. So click on your object. Here on the color, we want to import our new file. So select this little checkerboard icon here, select file and image name, select the folder and we will load up our new file. So I might need to go through here and find the right image. So let's have a look. I've got an awful lot of reference in this folder. So let's just scroll through. Yep. Yeah, okay. This is the one we want. And I've purposely chose this one. We can see it's rotated. So let's just rotate this because there's parts of this image that I don't want. So I want to show you how to also delete areas that you don't want. In this case, I just want to focus in on this bottom section here. So I'll show you how to do that. So let's just bring this up. So this is going to be our ground here. And if I just go back onto this one, control one, just to isolate it, we can see that I've also just extruded this and moved it downwards. So we've also got a bit of a base plane here. So if I duplicated this, it would have that texture. So we've got at least some detailing there for our ground. So we've got our image. Let's go to our modeling toolkit and start to multi-cut. 
Now I'm just gonna multi-cut on all of these edges here. And in this case, I'm gonna cut it off around about there. And I'm gonna cut it off, let's cut it off around about here as well. So all of this excess stuff, I don't want. You could always keep this if you wanted to. If you wanna have this, this kind of false perspective, then you could keep it. But all of this area I don't want, so I'm gonna delete it. So I'm just gonna to go to my move tool, make sure I'm in face. Select these top faces and hit delete. So drag, delete, drag, left click and delete. And now I've just got this one image. So I can just focus in on this now. So I can go to multi-cut, hold control and just add my other loops. So let's add one, it's trying to snap. There we go. Hold control here and I'm just making these edge loops basically where I want to add an extrusion. So this looks fine. I'll always try and extrude just slightly away from the edge. So I'll have just an edge that will remain there just so I'm not extruding all the way out from that one edge. I can always just move this edge out as well if I want to. This is good if I want to then duplicate the scene then at least I've got some sort of seamless edge that fits back with the uh, kind of flat plane. And if I add another building on there, I've got something to line up with. So just something to keep in mind. So let's just add all of these extrusions. You can add as many as you want, add as much detail as you want. But I would say for a concept, it's not extremely important that we have this super precise because we can put this back into Photoshop and we can start to do our kind of photo bash on top and make it a bit more precise. So let's say these, for example, these little vents here, we could add that or not. It's totally up to you how much detail you want to add. So I think that's looking pretty good for now. We can see even here, you know, I might want to extrude this, just this whole top section here. You could extrude that if you wanted to. For me, I think I'm just going to keep it the way it is. I'm going to keep it flat. And then you need to decide which areas you want to extrude inwards and which areas you want to extrude out. So we can see this actually curves. So I'm just going to add one here. And I'm being very quick about this. You would possibly want to create another point and then go to vertex and just move this up. But you'll notice that every time I move these vertices, it starts to stretch the image. So if I double click on the move tool and press preserve UVs. Now when I move this around, it won't interfere with this image. So I can go back into here, multi-cut, I'm going to join up these verts, go back to move tool, select that vertice and just move this up. Again, you could add as much detail as you want. You could make that a really smooth curve, but for a concept and time is money, we're not going to spend too much time on this. So Let's think of the areas that we're going to extrude backwards first. So in this case, I'm going to extrude all of these areas. I'm just going to extrude this window and I'm going to push it backwards. So by holding tab key on the keyboard, I can just left click and drag and select multiple of, or you can hold shift and just select them individually. But that tab key is a real quick way of extruding more than one. And let's extrude this backwards. So control E on the keyboard, or you can press extrude here and just extrude this back. And you can see it's starting to stretch. We're going to remedy that later. Now for the door, same thing. Let's select all of these here. Control E, extrude. And if you found that you've missed an area, just go back to the multi-cut, hold control and loop another one around. So that's now back there. And I'm also going to just extrude these ones back out. Okay, these kind of shutters that are on the window, I'm going to extrude these back out here. Okay, good. And what else? Let's extrude these. Let's extrude these backwards. All good. And then you could extrude the entire area if you wanted to, if you wanted it to kind of come forward more, if you wanted to maybe add a pattern here. So let's maybe add another point and let's pretend that these are more pillars, right? So let's just change that. So let's loop this around, maybe to about there. 
See, it's not joining up, so I'll have to join that up manually. Hopefully, there won't be any errors here, but let's have a look. So I'm going to select all of these areas. All across here. All the way up. You can see that wasn't actually joined, so let's join that back up. Unfortunately, I'll have to reselect that. OK, extrude and extrude this out. OK, looking good. Now for the ground, you can go to vertex and then select all of the bottom vertices. Press W and then I'm just moving this. So move it to the side and then move it upwards. And there we go. We've got our ground. As simple as that. So that is essentially it. We've got it extruded. You could go into more detail. You could go into these individual panels, for example. And let's say we extrude these. So we could control E, we could even create an offset, but just note that it will stretch that texture. As a concept, it won't really matter as much, but we could extrude and then extrude this back. Yeah, do you want to just create a little bit more detail? But it's just something to keep in mind. You will end up stretching the geometry. Okay, if I just move this back, there we go. So it's not that bad. I would only do this in very small areas because if I just zoom out here and it's part of this concept, you're not going to notice that you've got some stretching. If it does really annoy you, you can always just not stretch it, right? Um, when you go into your move tool, you could preserve those UVs. And hopefully that would help. But as soon as you start to push and pull this geometry, you are going to start stretching that image. Okay, it's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you're getting any area errors, so if you start to kind of move an edge and it starts to snap and it's not really working properly, that's because that preserve UVs is still on. So just turn that back off. And if you're really stuck in the move tool or rotate or scale tool is acting very strange, just press reset tool or we'll go straight back to the original. And if you're stuck, just press reset for all of them. And that should do the trick. So the sides, the sides are still stretched. Now we don't want that. So we're going to have to re-UV the sides. Now I'd suggest, again, I'm coming at this from a, a concept approach. I would say, what can you actually see within this scene? If I know I'm only going to see this side, then I'm not going to worry too much about this side, right? Uh, in the same way, if I'm only seeing this side of it, then maybe don't worry about this side, <laughs> okay? Uh, just to save you some time. But the way we would UV this, it's going to go to a, let's have a look at the front view. And let's just make sure it is selected. So I'm going to go back to this view and I'm just pressing space bar and to get used to right clicking on these menus to highlight which one you want. So in perspective mode, I'm going to press control one. I'm going to go back into this front view, press control one. And now we can see we've hidden everything else and we've only got this one image. And the same as this front one. So I want to re-UV all of these side elements. Now, I can't just select all of it because then I'll be selecting the front and the back faces of the image. And I don't want to re-UV the front textures that we've got. I only want to UV along the stretch sides. So I can do that just by holding left click and dragging. And notice I'm not going outside of the box. I'm making this really skinny and go all the way down from one side to the other. So making sure it doesn't touch either side. So now you see if I go back to this front view, we've got all of the sides selected, but not, um, not the front. So we'll have to go back here and do the same for these areas. So I'm just gonna select all of this. And if any areas are selected, oops, make sure you hold shift when you do that. If any areas are selected from the front, just deselect them. Okay, so we'll see what this does. I've done some very small extrusions. And this is where when you go into extreme detail and you start extruding a lot from the building, it can kind of trip you up, to be honest. You just want to get the main block in there uh, so that you have less to uh, kind of play around with when you're doing the UVing. 
So it looks like it's selected all these front faces. I don't want that. So let's deselect them. And let's just make sure, yep, sides are selected. That's looking good. I don't know if I need to worry about these, but I'll keep them there just in case. Uh, I don't want these front ones selected around the sides. That's fine. That's fine. The back, I'm not too worried about what's going on in the back here, but we'll keep them selected anyway. And it looks like this whole front section as well is selected. There we go. Okay, so just make sure it's only the sides that are stretched are selected. And if, like I said before, you just want to concentrate on this one side and not worry about this side, just go into face mode and tab select all of the faces that you want to change and then UV it manually. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to modify freeze transformations. That just freezes the uh, position of this object. We can go to UV and then automatic. Okay. So now when I go to UV and UV editor, we can see we've got all those UVs tiled on this one-to-one -one space. So now we need to start adjusting these UVs because if I just go back into normal mode, we can see it's done an all right job. You know, from afar, it might look like, okay. You could say, yep, that's done. That's fine. I'll move on. But as we zoom in, we can see it has pulled quite a lot of uh, texture detail from another part of the image. Uh, that doesn't look so great. So we can go into UV. So hold right click, UV, UV shell, and we can individually select these UVs. It's going to go to the move tool and we can see as I move this around and you might need to hold J just to stop the snapping or without J. Um, yeah, it can turn on and off for some reason. Now we need to move this into a spot that's going to be closer to the texture that we want. So I'm going to just go to scale, scale this down. Again, I'm just going to hold J just to stop this snapping. Looks like it's inverted. I'm going to go to the move tool, continue to hold J so I can move this. Yours might not be J. Uh, it might just move normally. For me, it's snapping without holding J. Okay. And let's just move this. Somewhere around about here. Uh, let's look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do the same here. So UV shell. And let's just move this somewhere else. Hold J, move this around. Let's maybe go close to maybe this kind of texture from the door. So let's shrink this way down. So scale. Shrink it down, back to move tool, and let's just put it right in between there. Okay, that's not bad. Um, let's just move it around somewhere else. Maybe somewhere along here. No, I think we'll just stack them there. I think that's fine. Yep. And let's look at somewhere else. I think this is looking okay. This one, not so good. So let's scale this, scale this down. Let's just use the same texture again, just to keep it consistent. And there we go. Again, same issue here. We could always change that. I don't think it looks too bad. This looks a bit strange, but we're not going to see it from that angle. Uh, this is fine. It looks like a wooden texture, and I don't mind that. Uh, these, it looks like it's pulling from maybe the brickwork and not this, something to keep in mind. I think this side view would need to be changed. So let's go into UV and let's just move that. Let's just scale this down. You could be as detailed as you want. I'm just very quickly going through this, but you can just move this into an area that might seem a bit more applicable. Might need to rotate it if it's upside down. You can rotate your UV, go back into move, and then try and line these up. Okay, a little bit off, you can skew it, make it a lot more kind of customizable. Right, so that's it. That is the entire process of just extruding these from a flat plane with an image in the background, and then UVing it so it, it looks nice from that angle. So if I press Control 1, that is that entire process.
so we can see here, for example, I haven't even properly uh, UV'd it. So let's say this one, for example, actually. We can see just on the sides, it's still stretched. But from afar, and I know once I start lighting it, it doesn't matter, you know. You could sit, have TV on in the background, and just spend a couple of hours extruding these images and then go into Blender, render it, do a painting, and get it done by the end of the day. Get some really nice results. If you want to spend a lot more time on it, go for it. Uh, but for a concept, you know, so you're not just using images and trying to stitch them together in Photoshop to actually have that lighting information and working in a three-dimensional space uh, is amazing to be able to do this in 3D. So it's a really cool technique. And I definitely recommend using it. Um, even if you're doing something like, um, let's say, post-apocalyptic world, you could easily just put these together, maybe make some other models, like I said, some kind of um, rubbish and boxes and maybe it's like barricades and Maybe you could model some of these buildings or even Photoshop some of these buildings so that they look a bit more decayed. And then you could add maybe some like moss and grass growing through, all that cool stuff. You could do that uh, just by using this technique. So we've modeled our one building. Excellent. So let's go ahead and just save this out. So file, I'm going to export the selection because I only want this one to export. And I'm just going to put this on the desktop for now. And let's name this uh, building underscore 01. Okay, and I'll export out as an FBX. So it's going to take that texture with me. Fantastic. And that's it for now. That's it for Maya. We're going to then go into Blender and do some rendering. So I'm just going to close this down. Okay, I'm not saving it, but make sure you do save your work. And then we'll go into Blender. So for Blender, um, this looks like a kind of epic transformation from Maya into Blender. But essentially, all I've done is I've lit this scene. So I'm going to show you how I light this scene. Now, we've only got one image, so I'll just light one. But I'm also going to just duplicate some of these buildings just to show you how um we could make a scene similar to this so let's go file new general don't save i'm going to delete this infamous cube and let's start with our import so file import i'm going to import fbx and go to my desktop where i saved it and import this building so it's rather small so let's just scale this up and then we'll go into our shaded view just so we can see this. So S on the keyboard to scale and then G to move this up. You can also, when you press G, hold middle mouse, and it's going to move uniformly along the axes. Okay, that's really helpful. And I use this a lot when it comes to moving it whilst you're still in camera view. Now you'll notice that there's still quite a lot of shimmer. So it's the original kind of material within Blender is still kind of shiny. So we can go into our shading view and let's just move this to the light so we can see this. Here on specular, you can just bring this all the way down, right? If you don't want any specular, just bring it down. If you want maybe a some specular, you could do that. Even if you wanted some kind of metallic, then you could do it that way. Um, roughness as well, you could bring that all the way down. And that's great if you had more kind of windows, then that's really cool. Uh, I'll sometimes do this. I won't actually mask out areas. I'll literally just turn it the roughness down because there's windows there. And although it may catch some light here, I'll just quickly paint it out back in Photoshop. But we can see just on the windows, that looks really, really cool, right? So you could even just apply that as a new texture. Uh, maybe even split that off in Maya and have that as a totally different model so that you can then change the parameters within Blender. So one's going to be without the roughness and then the other with roughness, but you know, quick and easy way, just, you know, remove the roughness, have it all shiny and then change it later in Photoshop. But that's a pretty cool result, but we're going to turn the roughness up anyway. So let's turn that back up. Okay. Awesome. So now we've got this set to our standard lighting. So we've just got one light in the scene. I'm going to go ahead and delete this 
And instead, I'm going to add my own lighting. Now, I'll usually add a HDRI in the background here, and I'll add my own Skydome light. So although when you go into these views, we can see a HDRI in the background, really, we want to add our own and use that as our lighting information. And we can use a Skydome light um, as our image that will be in the background, right? So how would I do that? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sunlight. So shift and A on the keyboard. We can go to add up here and go to lights and sun. So if I press G on the keyboard, I can move this up and then I can just light this scene. So already it's looking a lot more dynamic. We can see as I move this around, it's interacting really nicely with how I've extruded this model. So it's already looking just really realistic just by this very short demo. You can also go into the light here and you can increase the strength if you need to. And you can go into the color if you're after more of a kind of warmer dusk lighting or indeed a lot cooler. So again, I think this is already looking pretty cool, right? And you could go back in here and you can say, right, actually, let's have a look at removing that roughness and seeing what it looks like. Uh, in this case, not too much different. Uh, increase metallic. Yeah, not making too much of a difference. But experiment with it and see what kind of effect you want. So I'm just going to turn that down slightly. And let's just create a flat plane as well. So shift and A, mesh, plane, and let's just extrude this outwards. And I also want to just show you the Quixel mixer, which is the uh, mega scans that we can import in. So now we've got our plane. So I'm going to go into our wireframe mode. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to create our Skydome light. So I'll create a Skydome light by pressing Shift and A, or again, add up here, and go to Mesh and UV Sphere, and then press S to scale this all the way out. So I'm going to zoom out and scale this and make it really big. OK, this is essentially our world that we're going to be sitting inside here. OK, great. But you'll notice when you go into these views, of course, I've now just got a, a sphere, but the HDRIs will kind of just float around. There's no real ground there. The ground's always sitting way below where you have your flat plane. So we've created this sphere so that we can create our own uh, dome, but also have a ground. So I'm going to go into the wireframe view and I'm going to just snap to one of the sides. I'm going to switch over to edit mode. And I've got my uh, vertex or point selected. And I'm going to select halfway through. So I'm going to press S on the keyboard to scale, Z to center this, and then just zero to flatten that selection. Now here, our move tools here, I can go to move and I can just move this up. And now when I go into my shaded view and I zoom in, then we can see we now have this huge dome and we have a ground plane. So we're going to switch back into object mode and I'm going to right click and then I'm going to shade smooth just to shade smooth the, the background there. It's looking quite blocky. And let's add a new material. So here I'm in shading view, object mode, and then press new for a new material. And I'm going to drag in a HDRI. Now you can go to HDRI Haven to download a new HDRI, that's a good place to start. You can get any HDRI online. Just make sure it is a HDR format. So I've just dragged it on color to color. And now we have our HDRI looking pretty cool. So that is the process of creating a HDRI with a light, essentially. We've got a sunlight here. But you'll notice that as I move this around, it's no longer lighting our object. That is an issue. So if you want to change that, we can go over to our view and we can just bump up this endpoint. So I'm just going to add a bunch of zeros here and then may even need even more. Let's have a look. Yeah. 
Okay, so just make sure that when you've got the sun selected, you add a bunch of zeros, definitely in the lighted view. So we were just in shady view before. So now it's starting to kind of light our scene a bit better. So that's looking pretty cool. So if you wanted a background, you could do it that way. If you don't, just go ahead, delete it. You don't need it. But if you need some sort of background in place, that is how you do it. Now, if you don't want it to be too strong, you could go in here and you could just turn it down. Let's just turn specular down. Roughness, let's turn that all the way down. Uh, even emission strength, if there's any emission there, you could turn it down. Sheen, just turn it all down. If you're seeing any kind of reflection there, you can also click on the background. And then here within the modifier, you could add an edge split. So add modifier, edge split, just in case you're seeing any kind of glow along here. So that is how we would light it. So I'm just going to play around with some of the sun here. I might just go back into the sun, maybe just drop it down a bit. Something like that. And I've also just inputted this into the world. So you can just drag and drop that into the world there. Uh, and then you can just play around with how much you want this to be lit. So you could turn it down. You could turn down something like 0.1 if you don't want too much light. And then just use this as our lighting. Okay, so something like that as an example. If you're really not happy with the background, just go ahead, delete it. Uh, same for this one in the world, detach it and just use this, right? You could always just Photoshop your own background in place. Perfectly fine. Okay. So I'm just moving this in place. That looks pretty good. And we can go to shift A, lights, and then add things like a point light. So move this in place. It's gone behind. Where do you go on point? I've lost it. Where's he gone? Delete it. Let's add a new one. Light. Point light. I keep losing it. There it is. Okay, we can see we removed the roughness there, so we're getting a nice reflection. And I could just move this forward. And I can increase the light. And also change the color. Yeah, get that kind of cyberpunk coloring. Now I'm just going to go back into this, go back into the object and just increase the roughness slightly. Decrease specular, increase roughness. That looks pretty good. And if you want to light up any of these windows, I'll usually just very quickly create another light and I'll create an area light. Okay, so let's just press G, move this. So here's my area light. And I'll rotate this and just make it face this window and then scale it up and essentially just make it the same proportion of this window like so and then we could just bump up this power. Okay, looks pretty good. Now it's going to change a couple of these settings. I'm going to go in here. So we've got our rendering settings. I can turn on ambient occlusion. I can turn on blooms. So now again, that really nice bloom come through. You can go back into your light and you can turn it down if you feel like it's too bright. So that's probably more like it. Let's go back into our settings. Uh, we can have things like screen space reflection. So if we've got any uh, objects that are sitting on this ground here, we'll see those reflections quite nicely. 
And then here I'd literally just duplicate these. So I could just duplicate this model and let's just rotate this. And then I'll usually fake the perspective. So I don't have it as a, just a one-to-one -one, uh, direct flip. I'll just fake the perspective slightly just by turning it inwards like that. Uh, and then let's just duplicate some of these lights and just move these. Yeah, maybe this light's a different color. Uh, let's go back to our area lights and let's duplicate this one. And maybe this light is kind of coming through um, that shutter there. And I'll duplicate that one, but this time flip it around. Ooh, flip it around along the axes and then move it out. Shrink it down. And then just decrease the light like that. It's looking pretty cool. And you could do the same here. I could maybe just duplicate this point light. Control D, duplicate, move it across. Maybe I want another light here. And if you had another model, so maybe you actually had a model of a light, you could put that light there. But I think that's looking pretty cool already. And we've only got the these two models. So if you had another one, obviously, you don't want a complete copy one side or the other. And also, because we didn't UV that other side, this looks a little bit strange. Just something to keep in mind. I'd always compose your entire models within that one software. So in this case, I would have done the whole thing in Maya and then exported it. So the only thing I'm doing in Blender is lighting. Uh, but if you are using Blender for this technique, then you know do it all in Blender first and then light it. So that's pretty cool. Now, the last thing I do is just place an image that's in the background just to give this a little bit of depth. Um, but for now, I think I'm just going to add some fog. So I want some fog that would just come through here. So I'm just going to duplicate this and just give it at least the indication that this goes down in perspective. So let's just duplicate this one, move it over here but we won't see too much of it when we start to fog this. So let's just duplicate. Again, these would usually be different buildings. Let's just use the same asset like that. And let's use a principled volume. So I'm going to go into the world. And this was our HDRI. You can hook that back up. You can light it and see what that looks like. If that's the effect you're going for, play around with the lights, see how much you want to add or include. So it could just be a really small amount, 0.1. Um, you could even go even less if you wanted to. For me, I'm just going to disconnect it for now and see what this looks like. So I'm going to press Shift and A. I'm going to add this fog. So let's go to Search, go to Principled Volume, and then go to Volume and Volume. And that's going to fog the entire scene. So we're going to turn the density down. I'm going to set this to 0.1. And then here in the settings, I'm going to go into volumetrics and I'm going to play around with the start and end point. So I'm going to increase the start number around about there. And then we can also experiment with this end point. So you might just want to go backwards and forwards and see what this looks like. Okay, so we're starting to see more. But just note that the more you fog, the more it's going to interfere with some of your lights. So you might just want to bring it down. If you're going for a really foggy look, then that's how you would do it. I'm just going to bring that fog down. I only really want it around about there. And let's just decrease this one around about there. So I only want the fog kind of in this area here. I could always just go back into these lights, Shift D, and just move these back. So let's just move this all the way back here, just so that there's some lighting in place. 
something like that. And I'll change this color. Maybe it's like a blue. Yeah, it depends what effect you're going for. So if you had some neon signs, you could add some lights there and that would highlight that. But already that's looking a lot more cinematic as opposed to just that one image that we extruded. Now it's all coming together into one coherent scene. It's looking really cool. So I'm just going to move this up just so we can see this flat plane. Now you could on this flat plane here, just bring this up and we could add a new texture here. So let's just go down. In fact, let's not even add a texture. Let's literally just go onto this. Let's go to object. Let's start a new. And let's just see what it looks like without the roughness. Yeah, so just bring the base color down and make it darker. And you could add a texture, you could add a ground texture there, but I'm literally just experimenting with just the roughness alone. It could be good enough for a concept. Okay, pretty cool. Again, import your own textures in there and the like. Now, let's do something else that's pretty cool. Before we render this out, let me show you something on Quixel Bridge where we can bridge these objects and just scatter them around the scene. So let me just load that up. Now, this is Quixel Bridge. You can go onto Quixel's websites and you can download the bridge. Megascans is also online, so you can download all of the textures there. But I highly recommend you downloading the Quixel Bridge. And that essentially allows you to download all of these free assets, free textures uh, directly into the software of your choice, be it Maya, Blender, Unreal Engine, Cinema 4D, you name it, right? So here we've got a collection of objects that we can import. So we've even got rubble here. Like I said, if we're doing some sort of post-apocalyptic world. You might want to add some rubble in the scene. So let's go ahead and click onto rubble and see what they've got as an example. So if you wanted a new texture, then you could just import this new texture here. If you wanted all of these kind of assets, then you could import these in. So just scroll through, find an asset that you want to use and go from there. We've got cool stuff like here. This look, concrete rubble pile. It's really cool. All these kind of um, textures that we can include, kind of PNG textures. Awesome stuff. So go ahead, check this out. You can imagine this, you know, lying up against a, a building. Awesome stuff. So yeah, check out Quixel Bridge, and we're going to use that for this demo. So let's have a look at Essential, and I'm just going to go back to Home actually. And I'm going to go to 3D assets and let's see what we want to include. So maybe we add some grass as an example. So I'm just going to quickly scroll through and just see what they have first before I commit to anything. So let's look. We've got buildings, food, historical, industrial, interior, nature. Let's go on to streets. That would make sense, right? We've got bin bags, trash bag. Awesome. I tell you what. Let's go ahead and use this. Let's just add some trash, right? So I'm going to go to 2K resolution. We're going to keep this fairly low. And I'm going to select download. And you just have to make sure that within your settings, on the export settings, you've got the target export. So in this case, I've selected Blender. It will say install plugin. Install it. Make sure Blender's not on at that point. Load Blender, and then it should import in. Also within those settings, make sure you've got somewhere to actually download it to. So these are the settings by default. So it will download multiple versions of that and put it into a folder. Something to keep in mind, it is going to create all of these different iterations and they're going to be higher poly uh, going up. Make sure you've got enough space, right? Because these take up quite a lot of space when you start to download these assets. So we've got that bin bag. That looks pretty cool. Uh, let's just find one more thing. Look, we've even got curbs, right? So you could go and use that, import that in. Um, and we can do that soon, but let's have a look at these bin bags. And I want to show you a technique of just randomly generating, in this case, bin bags into the scene. 
Okay, so let's just let that download. We're nearly there. Don't think I'm going to add any of these other assets, but you can, again, see this post-apocalyptic worlds right there, all within these modular scenes. Very, very useful. Even this, look, brilliant. So that has now been downloaded, and then it will say export when it's complete. Nearly there. There we go. So export. It's going to say export into Blender. Hopefully it will be complete. There we go. Successful. And let's go back into Blender. And now we have our bin bag. Awesome. There we go. So let's just scale it up slightly. And what if I wanted to just randomly generate these throughout the scene? Now I could just do it manually and I could control D, duplicate, go into the rotate, rotate it around. But what if I just wanted to add a load of these randomly in the scene? Now <laughs> I don't know how this is going to look because it is random, but let's do it anyway. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go on to a uh, new collection. I'm going to create a new one. So let's just call this bin underscore bag, right? I'm going to drag this asset into the bin bag collection. And I'm going to select my flat plane. So this is my new flat plane. And let's go into our particle effects. So particle properties, press plus. I'm going to set this to hair. So by default, we've got a number of a thousand. I don't think we want a thousand bin bags. I'm going to experiment with maybe 20 just to see what that looks like first. Right, so now we're going to go over to Advance. We're going to move down. And then on the render, we don't want it to render as a path. We want it to render as our new bin bag. So we're going to select the path to collection. So render as collection. And then it says, what's the instance of this collection? So I'm going to select that new collection there. So now we have a bunch of bin bags that have been rendered on this new flat plane as we can see here. So they're kind of randomly generated there. So this is where we can go back into here and we can go into our scale, increase scale. We can randomize the seeds. So that's randomizing the scale of that object. That's really useful for things like grass and rocks, pebbles, if you don't want everything to be the same size. And we can just go through some of these settings. So you can go onto uh, things like velocity, increase, decrease, random tangent. So if you want to just kind of change the proportion, you can also randomize as well. So some are going to be rotated. Some of them are going to be a bit smaller and extruded. We can go to rotation, turn that on so that they kind of have a randomized rotation and experiment with that. So you can see some of them are going to be rotated. You want to turn that randomize on uh, and turn the uh, rotation on. Because if you're importing something and everything's facing the same way, like a rock, and it's all facing the same way, it's going to look like it's duplicated. So turn on that rotation, randomize phase. It's going to look really good. Um, and again, yeah, you can just kind of go through some of these settings, experiment with them. That's usually the only settings that I'd use. Um, yeah, it's the only setting I'd use for this. So you might just want to go around. We can see they're all just randomly generated here, but that is the technique that you would use. Now, anything that you put into this new bin bag collection is going to randomly generate it in the same way. So if I go back into this bridge, and that's something to keep in mind, if you import something in and then suddenly it's randomizing it loads of times, yeah, it's because it's in the same collection. So make a new collection, go through the same technique again, and you'll get a different result. So let's go on to something like grass as an example. And let's maybe... Now, do I already have some grass? I think I've already got some. Great. So let's go to export, export this into Blender, and hopefully it's put it into this collection already. So we've got our new collection. We've got some grass. Now we need to unparent it from this folder here. So I'm just going to select all of these, and I'm going to uh, delete that hierarchy. Right. In fact, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to delete this bin bag. I'm going to delete this whole thing. 
So then delete that. I'm going to create a new one because I think the grass is going to be really interesting. So let's just go through this process again. Let's go on to grass and let's import this in. So I'm going to export and that's now going to go into the grass. Okay. And don't delete the hierarchy. Instead, just unlink it. So now we've got all of this grass within our one folder. We can see somewhere here. There we go. So let's put our grass right there. Hard to see because it's below the floor. There we go. We have our grass. Cool. So let's duplicate this across the scene. So now we've got our new grass folder. We're going to select our flat plane. Here, let's just go ahead and delete this particle system. And let's go into plus, create a new one. I'm going to go to hair, a thousand. Why not? Let's see what it looks like. Keep it as a thousand. And we're going to go into our render. It's going to be a collection. And the new collection is going to be grass. And now we have all of our grass. So I can go ahead, increase the number if I want to. I can randomize this seed. I can change the hair length make them longer and I can kind of increase segments. So I'm going to go into this advance and let's just randomize this number again. I'm going to go to rotation and let's rotate them. We can go to physics, I'm not going to go into physics, render. We can increase scale. So that's really overgrown, right? So that could be really interesting. And then if you want even more, we could go back up to the top and we could increase the number. And then just randomize that seed until you're happy with the result. So that could look quite cool. Yeah, to a render like that. You just need to keep in mind that anything that you import, you've got to make a new collection or just go ahead and click back onto the original collection. If you import it into this, it's going to remove this and replace it with something else. So you're going to have a thousand bin liners and you're not going to have that grass. So if you want to do something else, create a new collection, and we'll name this, I don't know, let's name this something like rocks. And let's go into bridge, and let's see things that I've already purchased. Uh, some of these may not be on file anymore, which is kind of annoying, but let's have a look. Have we got a rock? We haven't got it downloaded anymore. Um, da -da 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 -da. I had to delete an awful lot because... Like I said before, it takes up a lot of space. Uh, so let's just type in rock. Rock. Search for it. Let's find one that we want. Um, do, 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 do. So that looks really kind of overgrown. Cobble. Mm. Sandstone. And this is another thing. You, you want to be careful of what you actually put in there because if you're going to have sandstone or something that's going to be in a mountain and then all of a sudden it's in your scene on the street scene, it looks kind of weird. So keep that in mind. Uh, I've got some sandstone there. No, 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 no. In fact, let's just go back into that street scene. So let's just type in street, see what they've got there. They might have some interesting stuff. So let's go to 3D assets, scroll down, and let's see what we've got to play with. Looks like this is all going to be interior, exterior stuff. Yeah, it might need to be a bit more. Let's go into street. Scroll down here. So street, and let's type in rock, see if they've got anything. No. Do they have um, stone, maybe? No. Okay. Let's look at props, then. to spend hours of scrolling through all this and deciding what you want to include uh maybe this okay broken cement there we go let's use that so let's just download it again at 2k might take a while 
but keep it at 2k especially for concepts if you're doing a video of this then for sure you want to bump this up to 4 to 8k but as a small concept keep it all as 2k because it was still look wow really really good so keep it at 2k export it over and also it won't be too taxing on your on your machine so this is now exported just go back into blender make sure you've got the same thing so i'm just going to rename this rename this as cement okay and then let's export it and it will export it into that folder back into blender this time it's not linked that's good i'll just scale this one up just so we can see yes yeah, so we've got this in the scene we could do the same process but you have to select a new plane right that's that's the big but you can't select this original plane because that plane is now attached to those uh plants so you would have to shift a mesh plane and you'd have to create a new plane wherever that plane is currently where are we come over here eventually get there where is it there it is let's scale this up and this time we'll just put it below the grass about there and in case you're wondering well can i just add this random hair onto an object like this yep you can so that's something to think about if you wanted to maybe add some sort of like rocky terrain onto one of these things and see what it does go for it it could get some really cool results so let's use that so there's our new flat plane so that's now selected we can put this outside of this folder just so it's into our normal one and you can name this as well so this could be you know cement underscore plane let's go into our particle effect press plus making sure we are on the plane not on the object go on to hair we've got a thousand of these things Woo. let's go on to 100 so that looks like and let's go to our render and change the path to collection and then change the collection to our new one which in this case is cement and now we have this so i'm going to increase the hair length here and we can randomize the seeds and then we can make a lot less of them now <laughs> i don't know why you'd want so many of these ideally i wanted rocks but i just can't find the rock that i really wanted so there we go as an example and you can play around with the scale as well you don't want this to look like easter island but there we go that is how we'd import them in Awesome, right? So you can just experiment with that. Go back onto the plane. We've already got the particles set up there. We could go to seed. We could do less of them. Randomize that seed again. So maybe you just got a couple of them. Kind of dart it around. If you want to be more precise, of course, do it manually. You know, just copy and paste this. But if you want to randomize this, this is a great way of doing it. So now we could maybe even create a new plane, All right? So let's um, create a new one, shift A, mesh plane, and I'll show you one last thing. And that is, oh, there we go. Already did it. We need to make sure, just undo this, that that new plane is definitely on this collection and not the rock collection okay so scale this out let's move this over and let's make this one textured so let's scale this up this tutorial is a little bit longer than i thought it was going to be but this is some really cool stuff here to experiment with so let's just move this down and let's just bring it up just to where the grass is around about there and let's just get a tileable texture on quicksaw bridge just to highlight how cool Quicksaw bridge is. So I'm just going to move this down just before it clips, which is around about there. And let's get a new texture. So let's keep it on street, maybe. 
but we want our surfaces. Let's go to let's go to asphalt maybe. Let's get a new damage asphalt. Let's check that out. So let's go ahead and download that one 2K again. Download shouldn't take too long. And then we can go to export. Now it doesn't export directly to that plane. We do have to manually input it, but it does export it over to Blender. So now I can go to a new material and I'm gonna go over to here and let's just select our new material. In this case, it was, uh, wasn't wild grass, where was it? Did it import? Might be all the way up at the top. There we go. Damage asphalt. And there we have it. We've got our texture. Now it's going to go onto that new flat plane. And now we've got all of this. Now, if you press uh, Control T, then it brings up this mapping. Now, if you haven't got that, then you can go into Edit and Preferences. And right here in the preferences, search for node, and it's the node wrangler. So make sure that's on so that when you press control T, you can just hook all of these up. So I'm going to select vector to vector, and I'm going to do that for all of them. So just drag this over if I can. There we go. Vector to vector. And we'll do the same here as well. Vector to vector. And now I can play around with some of these scales and do it this way. So I could say maybe minus two along all of these. Okay, depending on the result you want. So if you want it a lot smaller, do it that way. If you want to increase the texture size, then increase it. So increase this number two by two by two. Uh, maybe give even more, 10 by 10. Yeah, it's totally up to you depends on what you're looking for in that texture. So that is essentially it. That is going from Maya, from the reference image, extruding it, putting it into Blender, uh, putting it into a scene, adding lighting. Uh, I wanted to show you this technique of importing images and models, and then also duplicating them along the scene. And that is essentially the entire process on the previous video that I've uploaded with the vehicle. So that was a vehicle blocking in 3D coats and then kit bashed in ZBrush and then used a very similar technique in Blender to make that scene. But you could do the whole thing in Blender. You could make a very quick sculpt of a car and then you could download some kits, some kit bash kits online and then put them together to make your vehicle and then do a render of it here. So we can see already we get some pretty cool results. These are strange. I'd probably remove these, right? But you could import a new model in there if you're not happy with it. Because if we just go into cement, you just drag a new one in there and delete this one. And then it will add all of those settings into that new model. Very cool effect. The principal volume works really well in the background as well. Just to add that fog. You can add a HDRI if you want to, if you want to light the scene a bit more, uh, I usually just remove it and then I'll add my own background there. So with that camera, we could go to camera to view here and then we could go to view cameras and then activate camera. This is currently the camera in the scene. So let's just switch this around and we could do a new render of this. So we could go into our settings uh, we could increase the number here for the renderer. And then here in the camera, let's make sure the camera is selected. Where's my camera? There we go. Go to the camera. And I could change some of the settings here. So I could change something like the focal length. Something like that looks pretty good. I think 50 mil does a pretty good job. But maybe let's change it to 32 and then just zoom in. That looks quite interesting. Uh, 
Uh, maybe 40 mil. We can just fine tune it here. Just move it around. That looks pretty good. And let's maybe just change some of the settings. Um, let's have a look. So here in the output properties, we've got it set to 1080. Let's maybe switch this over to 4K. And then let's do a render. So F12 on the keyboard. I'll go to render up here. So F12, do a render of it. I'm using ED, more than good enough for a concept. Let that render. And then you can put it into Photoshop. So that's looking pretty cool. You might want to experiment with some of the lightings. You could use uh, another area light on top if you want that fog to kind of come through. You could do it that way. Um, let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to turn off this camera to view. And then Shift A, lights, and let's add an area light. My area light is all the way over here. Okay, zoom in here. Yeah, if you wanted some sort of light there, again, you could add another model. Go into your lights, increase that. Go back to camera to view, view, cameras, activate camera. That looks pretty cool. We could go back into our sunlight as well. Experiment with how we want to light this. So maybe you want a bit of shadow. Yeah, maybe something like that. That's quite interesting. And then F12. Let that render. Hopefully it doesn't crash because I haven't saved this yet. <laughs> uh, make sure you're saving your work. Yeah, there we go. So we could add a model there for a light and then let that beam of light come down. We've got that sunlight that's shining through as well. And it's looking nice. We've got some kind of reflections here from the model because I added... Um, Less roughness, but you could increase the roughness there. Um, yeah, just to avoid that. But that's looking pretty cool. So you could go ahead, save that image, save as. Uh, we'll just save it to the desktop for now. Uh, so street underscore render. Okay, save the image. Close that down and then save this out. File, save as. I'll do the same thing, street, oops, street underscore render, and save that. And then just close it out. And then into Photoshop. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. I just want to quickly show you uh, my other versions. I'm going to drop down all of these layers. So this was the original layer. I've added a curve just to add a slight vignette to make it a bit darker around the edges. I've then done a color correction on one layer, flattened it, put it on top. I've used another color balance because uh, I wanted a kind of a darker, gloomier scene. So I've made it more um, desaturated. I've added some bloom effects to the light. And then I've just sharpened it. I've added some chromatic aberration. That's where if I zoom in, you can see it's slightly turning kind of red and green along the edges. And then I've added some photos here, a bit of uh, photo bashing, some paint as well, just to break up some of these values here. And then that's it. That's the entire scene. So if we go into hours, what would I do? Now, obviously, we haven't got the rest of the building here. So that's an issue. You could fix that with the content aware and see what it does. So you could select around this area, and bring it up to there. I'm just using the lasso tool. So shift click to add multiple of. So around about there. And we could see what results it creates, but it's probably going to be a bit weird. So I'll go to edit, fill, and then set it to content aware. Click OK. Yeah, it's doing a strange job. So let's do it again. Edit, fill, 
content to wear, see what it does. Not a great job. Well done, Photoshop. So let's maybe just do it manually. Let's select an area here, um, kind of paint into it. Maybe it just brings it up. So I'm just using the um, uh, the clone stamp tool here. If you hold Alt, you can select a texture and you can just move up and then paint it this way. So we can just keep going backwards and forwards and just selecting some of the textures there. I, I kind of like how it looks like there's grass that's just coming up out of this almost like balcony area. I think that looks quite cool. But you could work into this and yeah, add as much detail as you want. <laughs> I may even be lazy here and just crop this down slightly like so. <laughs> uh, let's just bring this up like that and let's do the same thing i'm hiding it by pressing ctrl h that's hiding that selection and you can also try the spot healing brush tool and see what that does sometimes it does a pretty good job uh, in this case it it always wants to remove because it's a spot healing brush tool right it wants to remove it uh, if you want to add stuff i would use that clone stamp so let's just go back and let's just clone stamp this up yeah it looks good enough for now that's fine now, I'm almost imagining this is some sort of drone that's flying around. I'm very tempted to just do a little hack. Let's use the lasso tool, maybe just lasso around, maybe this area, actually, something like that. Copy and paste this texture. And let's maybe duplicate this. Control-T to free transform. I can flip horizontal, and essentially, I'm just trying to make a little drone out of this texture. So let's merge that down. And there we go. I've just made a little drone using that texture. So I'm just going to go into image adjustments, brightness, maybe just bring the brightness down a little, just so it's more of a silhouette. And then maybe create a new layer, bring that down underneath. I'll call this one drone. Oops. And then this one. Just with a um, a soft brush, I'll set this to white. Then maybe just add like a little bit of light that's kind of emanating underneath. I don't want it on top, so I'm going to use the eraser and just go ahead and erase that. Make sure my eraser is also a soft round brush. Yeah, like so. I'm not, I'm not crazy about that design, but you could always work into it more. Um, doing this as quick as I can. Yeah, maybe something like that. Looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and maybe just change some of the color. So I'll usually go to color balance and I'll just experiment with this. Do I want it warmer or colder? Okay, so in this case, I kind of like this purplish tone. So I might just keep that. I, I think I like the original color, to be honest. I might just spruce it up a little. So I'm going into highlights. Increasing that blue, increase the scion, make it a little bit brighter. Uh, it can increase the greens. It's starting to look a little bit too bright, and I didn't want that. I want it to kind of look a little bit gloomy. So I think that's fine the way it is. Shadows, be wary about shadows. This really does change and kind of crush all of the values there. So just be wary about that. So that's looking quite cool, but we are starting to lose some of those reds. So you might want to mask some areas off. So you can close this down. The great thing about this mask color balance, I can go back into my brush, make sure it's set to black. I can just bring back some of those areas. So if I want it to look kind of faded and red at the top, then I could do that. So before, after, see which one you prefer. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe something like that. We don't want too much of a variation in color. Yeah, something like that. Maybe just bring it down a little. We could go to a curve and then just select one point, bring it down. Select another point, bring it down again. And now it's looking really gloomy. So I can go, again, it's a mask. So I can select my soft round brush and just start to paint in that light back into the scene. Very cool.
another setting you can use and you might want to use a mixture of all of them or just one i'll use the color lookup this is kind of like an instagram or whatever you use nowadays <laughs> using a filter uh i'll select one and then i'll just scroll through and then find an effect that i really like that's really cool really gloomy uh it's more blue crisp winter that's really nice i think i might drop the blues actually that's looking blade runner ish and we're starting to get a totally different result just by using color lookup right so just scroll through these and find one that you think is working really well i think i might actually drop the blues oh even that's looking really cool so yeah experiment with them see which one you like i may just go to that drop the blues make it look quite cinematic do something like that and then maybe just bring back some of that blue i want it to look really hazy to be honest um and this is where you just keep going right you could just keep going using that lasso tool maybe refine this light a little bit more so i could go back into that layer underneath and then maybe do something like that maybe do a new layer something like that turn it down and then just blur out that edge. Yeah, maybe. I kind of like the light that just shines through the, the side instead. Let's maybe just rotate this slightly. Yeah, so it's flying that way. <clears throat> I'm almost tempted for that drone to literally just be like a circle. So I just stretch this out something like that then i could use my elliptical tool i'm holding shift to make it a circle and spacebar just to move it onto the texture and then copy and paste this and hide that one and see what that looks like i don't know a bit more abstract Maybe a mixture of both. Or maybe you 3D model a drone. <laughs> but this is where the concept art comes in, right? This is where you kind of go backwards and forwards and think, oh, that would be cool if it was a drone. So maybe I need to start to model a drone now and do another render and put that in place. I think I might just do a mixture of both, actually. I'm going backwards and forwards here. I'm sorry, but let's just go move this one on top and have this as our drone. I think it looks pretty cool, right? So there we go. Yeah, we can keep going backwards and forwards, adding more light, adding more adjustments, uh, continue to paint into it. I'm only using a mouse at the moment, so I'm not using anything like a, a tablet. Maybe let's just add some lights here. We could go into a new layer on top and we could add some bloom effects. So we could go to a soft brush and let's maybe do a bloom effect up here. That's maybe a little bit too bright. Let's maybe do an orange instead, something like that up there. Maybe the bloom effect on the blue. This looks really stark and weird at the moment, but I'll show you what it looks like soon. And then maybe more of a kind of purpley effect up here. This might be a bit too much, but let's have a look. And then let's set this to color dodge and let's bring it down. And that looks quite interesting. I think it works up there. Might be a little bit too distracting here. So just turn off and on. See how that looks. Not bad. Okay, so we'll keep that. Another adjustment, you can use brightness, increase brightness, increase contrast. I think for now that looks pretty good. Don't think we really need it. So let's remove that. And that's it. That is the entire process. So if, with this stage, I would highly recommend rendering into your renders. Yeah, so put them back into Photoshop and finalize them, right? They're never, I mean, they're really going to be done straight from the software. It's very rare. You want to experiment by adding more lighting, adding some kind of fine tune elements and also color grading back into Photoshop. So here I'm just even just experimenting with it being a bit darker in the background and seeing what that looks like. 
So I'm using a, a blend if, making it a bit brighter just here and then darker underneath. There we go. Now this is really starting to come through. And because I've got some texture brushes, I could just spend all day on this. I could just keep going and going and going. I could add some smoke effects, right? I've got some smoke brushes. So select that and maybe there's some mist and there's some fog in the background. Yeah, something like that. And then use the eraser. Basically erase the whole thing. <laughs> but experiment with it. Yeah, I think the fog in this case is kind of distracting, so I'm not going to add it. But you could. And right, final thing. Let's wrap this up. Control Shift and E. That will flatten the whole image, put it on top. All of those final changes, things like sharpen, I can go to filter, uh, sharpen, and I can do a smart sharpen. And that's just going to bump up the resolution a little bit more. It's going to sharpen those edges. If it's a little bit too soft, then you can just make this a little bit sharper like that. Looks pretty cool. We start to see all of those cool details come up now. And we can go to filter, noise, add noise, any kind of painted elements that you've added into the scene. If you add a noise, it will blend them in really well. So let's just turn it off. Looks a little bit too soft. Add that noise, and it's all starting to blend together nicely. So you can add that. And then the last thing you can add is a chromatic aberration. So when you take an image with a camera, you get a slight distortion on the lens, and you can mimic that by go to Filter, Lens Correction. In this case, we don't want to add a correction. We actually want to add this fringe. And I usually just add more red, add more magenta, and then add more blue. So backwards, forwards, backwards. Click OK. And now when you zoom in, we can see we're getting that distortion here on that camera lens. Makes it look a little bit, little bit more three-dimensional and blends in some of these elements really well. And that is pretty much it. So I hope you found that useful. By all means, you know, use the same images, experiment with it. You don't have to use the one. I've used one and duplicated it, but even then it's starting to look pretty cool. You can use that one image and even photo bash into that one image to make a variation of it and then duplicate it. But experiment with these tools. And as you can see, you can get some really cool results. I've just blurred this here just to make it look like I've used a shallow depth of field. And then there's my final result. There's my final render. So within a day, you could easily get multiple renders done with different themes just by using this technique. So I hope you found that helpful um, and I will see you in class. So take care, everyone. Goodbye.